Uh, Nancy. Hi, I'm speaking with Nancy Duarte, who's the keynote at the STC Summit in June in Columbus, Ohio. And I'd like to thank you so much for joining me to talk about your work and also about your keynote. Thank you. It's great to meet you, and I'm excited about the STC event. Oh, that's awesome. We're excited, too. Now, before we dive in, I want to just take a quick tour through your resume so everyone who is attending the summit will know a little bit more about you. First of all, you're the author of three popular books about how to make presentations more effective, um, resonate, present visual stories that transform audiences, slideology, the art and science of creating great presentations, and the Harvard Business Review Guide to Persuasive Presentations. So three great books there. And I understand you're working right now on a new book that's going to come out soon. And could you tell me a little bit about it? Ooh, yeah, we're uh, working hard on it. This time I have a co-author, which is totally fun. Um, the smart, smart gal on my team where we've come up with a pattern of transformation. And as a leader, it's our job to transform our organization so we're ready in the future and there's no way really to transform without persuading so we found a, a pattern of transformation and and the types of stories speeches and ceremonies you need to do to create these galvanizing moments that push people toward the future you're trying to create so it's it's really a lovely piece I'm 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 excited about it writing it changed me and really bonded me with my co-author in a way I just didn't know was possible. So we're having a good time. That's great. I, th I think that the uh, audience at STC is really good. That's going to be a book we're going to find very interesting because we're always yeah, talking maybe about... I'll sneak, yeah, I can sneak some of the models maybe in my presentation. Awesome. Yeah, because we're always talking about how important change and transformation is. So that sounds really great. Well, um, jumping back, I have to jump back to your resume again because you have so many great things. Uh, you gave a TED Talk. And you also work with the TED team to improve the quality of TED Talks, so you're TED squared. Uh, you work with <laughs> Al Gore to create the presentation that is at the core of an inconvenient truth. Yep. And you're the CEO of Duarte Design, the largest design firm in Silicon Valley, which you started in 1988. So it's been around for a while. And uh, so you were leaning in before it was trendy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, lean, I leaned in so far, I think I've fallen over. <laughs> <laughs> An ancient leaner, I guess I am. No, you trend, uh, you, you set the standard. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. now, now you've done, uh, jumping back to talks, I know I'm jumping around a lot, but there's so much to talk about. Um, you've done talks at many type, types of conferences, you do marketing conferences, tech conferences, probably some other kinds. Now, are you looking forward to addressing an audience of fellow communicators? I love, uh, I love having conversations with communicators because I feel like we have walked in each other's shoes, right? I know what it's like. I know what they go through on a daily basis. I know how hard it is to uh, craft a piece of communication that brings the kind of transformation you're trying to bring. And so I can talk in shorthand, which means if I can talk in shorthand to other communicators, I can get through more material and then they can get more value out of my talk. So um, I'll be talking super fast when I'm <laughs> just talking in shorthand and uh, see if I can get through as much as you guys pull out of me. I'm happy to give. That sounds, that sounds, that sounds fantastic. fantastic. Now, I was looking at your website, and you have a project called the Slide Doc Project. I guess yeah. you could say hashtag Slide Doc. <laughs> That's really interesting, and I think anyone interested in learning more about communication should take, take a look at it. And in it, one of the things you mentioned is that shorter communication is the new norm. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on why you have found that that's the truth. Yeah, we, we coined the term slide doc, and the only reason I'm kind of protecting it with a trademark is so I can put it in the public domain and eventually try to get it to be a dictionary term. Um, it, we've just changed so much how we process and consume information. We're consuming them in smaller bites, 
it's really rare. I mean, when you're making a really big technical decision, you may sit for two hours and really read through some technical documentation, but probably not. You usually go and you find the exact answer you need for the exact question you have, and it's not very often you can see someone with their feet propped up on their desk reading for two hours. You know, we just don't do that anymore. Right, we get right. access to bytes of information that set us up to be successful. Um, so. One of the reasons people hate presentations is because they've really made slide docs. They've created documents that can travel around email or travel around anywhere and are self-explanatory. Everything you need to know, you can read right on the slide. And then what happens is a presenter will turn their back to the audience and read a slide doc, whereas a slide doc can live and spread on its own. It was really the first content marketing slides were, you know, they could spread everywhere. And so what we did is we kind of named the enemy. This is a really dense, bad slide. But it was, I think, about 85% of all slides are dense, rich information. So it's meeting a communication need. And clearly, it's a very nice brief form. So what we're saying is pour a little bit more on those really dense slides and call it a document. And it's really nice because it's like um, modular collateral. You know, we, we don't even hear the word collateral anymore in marketing or communication. Yeah. It's just gone from our vernacular. That's because slides have replaced collateral. And go into these really dense slides and make them beautiful. Have, make them have visual hierarchy. Make it so they can find things quickly as they click, 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 click through your slides. So it's really turned out people have been thrilled <laughs> to get that body of work because it really uh, took the pressure off the communicators who really did know um, how to use it well. Okay, yeah, I th as I said, I think anyone interested in more, making more effective communication should just go to your website and check those out. Yeah, slidedocs.com, um, and you can also get to it off of duarte.com, but it's faster to just go to slidedocs.com. True, true, right. So a thread throughout your work, including your TED Talk, is the word resonate and that messages must resonate with your audience. Why, why do you think resonance is so important? Um, I, I love it for the physics phenomenon of resonating. If, if you're communicating and you're sending signals out all day, when you communicate in a way where that signal hits the resonant frequency of the receiving object, it'll vibrate, it'll move, it'll shake, you know, it'll be touched. And so when someone says, wow, what you said resonates with me, what they're saying is you said something that hits me as true. It rang inside of me as true. And you can send out communications all day, but if you don't empathetically understand who you're talking to and communicate with them where they're at and from their vantage point, walk in their shoes, really understand what they need from you to be successful, then you're not resonating. So so the empathy is the is the core concept of resonating. I'm going to communicate to you in a way and give you what you need to make you successful in your journey. And so often as communicators, it's like, oh my God, I've got these 12 things I have to communicate. My boss mm -hmm. says they all have to be communicated. And we forget, we need to really think not about what we're trying to blast out there, but think about what who's on the receiving end right, and what right. they need from us to be successful. Right, knowing, knowing your audience. Right, right. So um, one of the going, I know I keep going back to your TED talk, but it's, it was just so interesting. But one, the name of it was the secret structure of great talks, and I thought it was really interesting that you gave a talk about giving great talks. So that must have been a lot of pressure. You know, when the presentation lady gives a presentation, you have to nail it. Like I can't be a terrible presenter <laughs> and be the presentation lady. So that was hard. That um, I knew the stakes were high and I knew it was a TEDx talk. So it was a TEDx talk out of New York. And I knew if I nailed it, if I really nailed it, that a small percent of TEDx talks get picked up and put onto TED.com. Mm -hmm. And so um, I did the talk in 2011 and it got a lot of um, just pick up when they put it on YouTube. So I tweeted like, oh, my TEDx talk has this many talks and I copied TED.com <laughs> and they picked it up put on the main site so um, which I was happy about but that was a year and a half after the talk they actually picked it up and um, I spent 35 hours just rehearsing and I'm a professional speaker so I trimmed it and and had a coach and she's like you know 
you're spending like a minute on this and I think that's only worth about 15 seconds in the context of the talk. So you can take this other 45 seconds and move it here. You know, it was just like, wow. Um, to really t dial it in to make sure I was creating the right emphasis on the material. And then when you rehearse, you you naturally can get it to a certain place, but you sound like you're rehearsed. You sound like you memorized it, or sometimes you kind of look up like, okay, I'm trying to remember what I'm about right. to say. <laughs> you, you can tell that you've heard. And then there's this moment where you just forget what's in your head. You forget that you've memorized it, and you come across more naturally and conversational, and breaking through that barrier takes a long time. But for me, the stakes were high, so I wouldn't say every executive should rehearse for 35 hours. <laughs> That talk's had over a million talks. They reset the count. I don't know why, but it's had about a million and a half talk um, views. If you take Vimeo, YouTube, everything and add it up, it's had a, like a million and three quarter views. That's a lot. And it drove my business. You can actually see right when the TED Talk hit, my business spiked and grew by about 30%, um, which was just a basket full of blessing and curses <laughs> to grow that fast. But um, it really made a difference that I put that much work into it. Yes, yes, preparation always, always important. And 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 as, but as you noted, it's it's pre you prepared, but then you reached a point where it wasn't memorization; it was just part of you. It was just is, authenticity. Yes, yeah. yeah, it really comes through. By the way, wow. I really enjoy it. Thanks. Now. Um, one of the things, technical communicators pride themselves on, on two things that you mention are two of your three keys to a great pr presentation. Now, I won't tell people what the third one is. They're going to have to come to your talk and hear about it. But one thing is being audience-centric, and the other is understanding our roles as communicators. So I wanted to mention, I, I, I believe the audience will be very friendly because... <laughs> Oh, please, I hope so. <laughs> because we're 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 on we're on Team Nancy with that, so we we totally get where you're coming from. So um, it, that being said, could you tell me a little bit about the talk you're planning for the summit in June? You don't have to give it all away, but I, I just wanted to hear what the takeaways for the audience would be. Yeah. So um, in June, I um, I'm going to do a longer form talk. Go a a lot deeper into some insights. I share insights into uh, Steve Jobs and Dr. King that I don't share in the TED Talk. And then I bring in an um, analytical uh, presenter, which I think everybody would really enjoy, a very technical presenter, a couple international examples, female. I bring a female to the table too, have analyzed that. And um, I, I do feel like um, my body of work is, is around empathy. And as communicators, we are empathy architects, and that's a title that I try to embody. My, um, I don't naturally have empathy. I feel like I'm a heartfelt communicator, but I, I don't take the time to really process how you may receive what I'm saying. And so I've built an infrastructure around myself and around my own heart to see empathy structurally so I can eventually be a person who walks in empathy. Um, so hopefully maybe I'll um, be able to put a couple models in there from my next book too, which would be fun. That sounds, that sounds really it's another interesting. another model for empathy, of course. <laughs> no, that's, that sounds fantastic. I'm, I'm really looking forward to your talk, and I know everyone there is... is really look, is going to look forward to it after hearing all of this and I want to I, I know you're on a deadline for your book so I'll, I'll I just want to say thanks so wow. much for chatting with me Nancy. Great job. Thanks. thanks and I I'm looking forward to meeting you in person not just on Skype and okay. attending your keynote at the Society for Technical Communication Summit in Columbus Ohio this June yay thank you so much thank you have a good night Thanks.